they made the Marble Machine X play the Marble Machine song. think we have this grand plan of how uh, to do a meetup and like we have this figured out from start to finish. Hello and welcome to this episode of Restoring the Marble Machine X. Last time the final pieces of this machine puzzle got placed in the right spot. Now we can go back to actually make the machine play during the meetup. Two things about the vibraphone needed our attention. First thing is that the lever which controls the dampening system could hit the marble lanes. You can see it has this, this springy uh, setting or this to keep the vibraphone muted. If you suck it down there, this is really well stuck. And to bring it out, you would obviously just yank it and, and bonk whatever's up on top. So what I made is this piece of sheet metal there. This little roof here protects whatever's up top from the lever itself. The second safety issue is that the vibraphone funnels shake so much that the marbles can jump out. They are sitting loosely on the PMMA pipes which drain the marbles. We made a bracket which connects them together and stops them from moving. Another task we've got to do is basically take the kick drum and repair its cable to the contact microphone inside of it. At some point the cable to it got a bit mangled up and snipped off. And what we've done is take a coaxial connector. Now we're going to solder one half to the microphone itself and the other half to the lead. Once it's installed on the machine, hook these up together and this jack plug simply goes into the mixer like any other kick drum would. We had applied latex pads on vibraphone plates that didn't have yet. We had a bit of use of them. It turned out that some of them have to be replaced. For that, I have first to take off the pads we had applied. We'll have to clean the surface again and then draw on the new placement marks and put on new latex pads. For the latex, Marius and I conducted a couple of tests with different mixtures of latex and water, and it turned out that a 50-50 mixture with that uh, Laguna latex was the best. The vibraphone is ready, but we were really short on marbles because a lot of the ones from Martin were rusted and rough. Wow, look at this water. It's black. Something is coming off the marbles. That's good news. So I'm trying to dry them fast so they don't rust. And of course I was too late. Another facepalm moment delivered by yours truly. They were fatty, now they're rusty. We got new ones from a different manufacturer and these ones happen to be fresh in the bag but with oil on them to stop them from rusting. So now if you would toss them like this in the machine, they would attract graphite dust, other kinds of grime, maybe wood dust. So Lucas from the museum suggested like, throw this into the tumbler, put some uh, sawdust on there and that will absorb all the old ones. They are simply tumbling and tumbling around. The 
The machines are ready and loaded. We got a music program on there. The attendees are queuing up to enter the halls. Welcome to the Wintergatan Community Meetup. Part of the meetup was attendees presenting their own passion projects. The whole event was live streamed and you can find separate videos of the talks in the playlist on our channel. Finally, we had Ellie and Margaret represent the Musikkabinett volunteer team to give a summary of the struggles with restoring the MMX. Welcome to the restoration talk. We knew that we wanted reference measurements and reference pictures. We knew the machine would be needed uh, leveling. We knew that we need to keep track of tasks, air table for the win. What we didn't know was the whole host of to-dos that we would face. Um, the rhythm machine, which is also a symbol, needed a bit of tuning because um, the timing was completely off. So there was a lot of adjustment in that area. It took like, maybe a whole day. The marble ring life, which sure. was a whole adventure um, because that was one of the main issues that Martin faced, too many marbles feeding into the pipe itself. That meant that we had to remake the entire first ring lift. So we had less marbles flowing than the second ring lift. We didn't have that overpressure issue anymore. We could avoid having to make a single pipe that would be pressurized by marbles. We still have a few issues with it, but it's mostly fixed to the point that if we program the right music on it, we can go pretty hard, but it works. Uh, the conveyor belt was working for a while, and then issues that Martin had faced uh, we also faced with mark pulls getting stuck behind it. Which screw works how? A uh, case of trial and error. The marble swoosh worked mostly well. So it's always a case of first leveling the machine and then see what the device before does, if it needs additional leveling or not. From there on, uh, we had the, the lovely issue of tuning the droppers things that Martin had to deal with. And so did we, because we had to deal with it afterwards. Martin, as you might have seen in the last live streams videos from his part, assembled at least those two droppers. So we were thinking we would just have to tune them and that'd be it. When we had to actually make the rest of the droppers, which were still in pieces, uh, it turns out we wanted to standardize everything. So we took them down, dismantled them, and remounted everything, making sure that it was perfectly the same as each other one. And the, the assembly happened multiple times to make sure that it was the right, we had the right standards, that everything was done correctly enough that it worked reliably. I'm saying reliably because some of you saw it work, it's reliable. The rack that the droppers are mounted on that Martin had made had an issue as the gates were positioned on that slightly angled. Quite a task until we were absolutely sure that this design now should work. Another part that uh, we now elegantly skipped uh, was the pipe bending. I think someone has a trauma from that. Yes. The pressure modules that Martin had been fiddling with at some point weren't necessary anymore for a pressure relief, as the escapement gates need pressure to work. If they don't have enough pressure, the small star won't rotate. If you remember from the videos from Martin, the pressure reliefs and regulators he made were very angled in the sense that the marble would basically go horizontal in the center. So if it ever got um, stuck, the marbles would not go down the slope by themselves again. They'd have to be loaded again. There's always going to be something stuck in the middle. One thing that we did enjoy doing very much and was, was very fun because we got to play with instruments was uh, the resonator pipes. Surprisingly, Martin hadn't even had gone to that point yet in his progression. PVC pipes that you would see in like plumbing. Uh, 
uh, which works surprisingly well for, for each plate, sorry, um, the right length of pipe that we needed for it to resonate correctly. And again, we had all the pipes, which means there's 38 total, I think, or 32? I think 34 due to 34. missing plates. Uh, the longest one ends up being a meter and a half long. So we only use that one on special occasions. And yeah, and that leads us to the plates, which some of them are not finished, if you can take that up. The ones that were usually in Martin's videos, they had the latex patches and they were mounted on the holders. That was not the case for many of the plates. Mounted the gates that hadn't been mounted yet and replaced the elastic string and rubber bands where necessary. All plates are now available to be played on the machine. That was one of the smaller tasks. Smaller task meaning it took two days to do it. We're reaching the end of all the issues we had. One of the weirder ones, we're going to say that, we're supposed to have kinetic fingers, that thing. Um, Martin used uh, washer stacks on screws in a very Martin-like fashion, but we ended up uh, well, both not having the time for it, and also it wouldn't be necessary since this machine isn't planned to play on stage, so we, we don't need as much of a visual um, signal about what notes being played. So the quick fix slash very permanent fix that we're going to use for now is uh, elastic string and screws. So it's less janky than a washer stacks. Uh, it's still a bit janky, but it works. Right before this uh, meetup is to actually get audio to the machine. We used uh, sm some two small stereo mics that are just hidden behind there. You might be able to see them with uh, some custom um, shock mounts because we have to fit them right in between the programming wheel and that, that frame rail uh, without getting the cables just murdered by everything behind it. So that makes uh, two microphones for the vibraphone, one for the kick, four for the bass, and everything else is way too loud for a mic. Using cables does also mean very careful cable management because this machine moves and we made it move. Some stuff was fixed right before the meetup and some stuff was fixed as some of you saw during the meetup as in uh, some one pipe up there that we have to be rebent right there on the floor. Now the machine as it is we consider it to be functional enough to be called finished. Uh, again there's always a few tweaks, there's going to be marbles on the floor, whatever happens. We're not trying to remove that completely, it's also part of the machine. The intent was to get this machine museum ready and playable and that's what it it has reached at this point today. And I guess let's play it at the original song speed, which was 120 BPM. And you will notice why um, not every visitor is allowed to play it very fast. The shaking is very significant. With the meetup behind us, our next task will be to get MMX out of the studio into our exhibition. Though this doesn't mean that the story of MMX is finished just yet. So make sure to subscribe if you want to know what else we have planned for MMX in the future. Speaking of future, the preparations for the next community meetup are already in full swing. It will be from the 9th until the 11th of August. Keep a lookout on our website and Discord if you want to be the first in line for updates. 
Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in August. Hello guys and welcome to this behind the scenes episode of how we shoot at Musikkabinett. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What are we gonna do today? I actually don't know at the moment. <laughs>